Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to the Nanyang American Qualifiers. We're taking a look at a wonderful match. Game number two, friendship, dedication, love facing off against Shazam. Last one was a little bit clowny, a little bit crazy. SVG had to leave very quickly, and now we've got a new buddy who's entering the arena. Pandango, formerly of Team E-Hug. He might still be a part of it. I'm not sure if E-Hug is still a thing or not. Uh, Lyrical Dota joined today by Gorgon the Wonder Cow. Sir, how are you doing? We're seeing an H's Prophet again. Uh, see if it changes. It worked out well for them last time for about four minutes. So, oh, you know what? Uh, the, the Nature's Prophet is not where they went wrong, though, right? Where they went wrong was really that safe lane. The Morphling, Phoenix, whatever else they had. Lion. It was a lion as well. That game got, was such a bulldozer of, of a fight. I, I'm having trouble even remembering the heroes that FDL had drafted because they were just a non-factor. Yeah, no, definitely. It was a it was a really rough one. Um, they were able to pull out uh, the puck in the mid lane along with the Nature's Prophet. They actually are going to ban out this time the Beastmaster for Brax, uh, not wanting to give him that. And so that does mean that we're going to be treated to a Bounty Hunter this game. So Bounty Hunter Invoker, kind of an interesting idea. I will say that I, whenever we've seen Bounty Hunter played recently, the really great response that I've seen teams do and I really like and I, I hope that Friendship, Maybe Dedication, Love do back. is just try and go for all-out push. And I think that that's really what you need to do to try and, and defeat a Bounty Hunter is take down towers early, build a net worth advantage, and don't stop the pressure. Because if you start getting into those little skirmishes, things go awry really quickly. So Nature's Prophet, Bounty Hunter, Invoker, and Phoenix all taken so far. What are your thoughts on Bounty Hunter as a hero? I think that in order to maximize out on that Bounty Hunter, you need to be taking ganks or those small skirmishes that you were mentioning. You, you can group up as five very early, and that will mitigate most of what the Bounty Hunter provides. The other option that you can do is very carefully farm for long periods of time. Mm. Uh, with with you know sentries down so that the bounty hunter can't sneak around oh, uh, and and provide kills on you. But you see a lot of games where bounty hunter just falls off. Um, he at we play was one of the only heroes. In fact, I think he was the only hero that had success in games that lasted between twenty five and fifty minutes, and mm. success in games that lasted over fifty minutes, but no success in games that were sh quicker than average. So huh. before twenty seven minutes, um, so he does hit a certain pattern of play where you need to use him in the early game to get off to an advantage, but that advantage doesn't actually roll you into a victory for like twenty minutes because you need that net worth to to really start to stack up before he actually provides that much. Ten yeah. seconds. I, I, I think that that's true, and we've seen that also another way to make it work Five is uh, go for the, the Tome of Experience for the Bounty Hunter uh, to try and accelerate that timing where he does become effective, but even still, a lot of teams have just answered it with a lot of push, and you see right now the heroes that have been banned out, the Death Prophet want to make sure that that's off the table. We did see the Dark Seer as well, who's going to be able to stop that push and pressure on the side lanes also from occurring. Um, the Lion, and last but not least, the Bat Rider are all removed for the moment. Um, also now for the third pick for Shazam, I kind of would like to see a little bit of wave clear just in case FDL try and go for the mega push strat. Is there, uh, do you think you need to go for another support at this point or is it worth it trying to invest in an off lane? Depends on, on the priority of the hero that you want, right? So right now a support would be a good pick because it probably wouldn't get that much away about what Shazam are looking to do. But if they want a very high priority offlane or somebody who's drafted a ton right now, right, then they probably need to grab them right away. Um, that would be, for example, if Beastmaster had still been in the pool, you, you wouldn't be able to let the Beastmaster float indefinitely. You would have to grab them here. Uh, it does seem like Shazam are thinking about what they want to do, and that implies to me that they will probably pick a support up here. Uh, in terms of supports, they need something that can provide some lane control. Uh, the Bounty Hunter will rotate uh, pretty effectively, and he also won the best thing that Bounty Hunter does, honestly, uh, other than provide track gold, is he applies pressure into the mid and onto potential junglers. So it's more difficult for FDL to get catch-up gold in the jungle. It's also much more difficult for uh, Invoker to lose his lane, because Bounty Hunter will be a constant pressure, especially if your opponents are a bottle-running mid. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's something else to consider is making sure that they're going to be able to be somewhat self-sustaining. I will say that the Nature's Prophet can still make those rotations in from the offlane. We've seen it mm-hmm. from time to time, particularly out of you know some of the, the top-level teams. Now, it seems like everybody always ends up putting themselves in a position to make sure that they can cover their mid laner. And Witch Doctor is going to be the pick for Shazam. So, as you mentioned, a strong laning hero gives you a little bit of D-push to some extent. It also deals fairly effectively with the Treants um, if they start giving you a little bit too much bother in lane. Uh, yeah. And the team fight too. Also, FDL don't have any reliable way to knock to, to knock Witch Doctor out of his ultimate, which is fantastic. You already have a support pick. You have the off laner pick. This essentially forces FDL's hand. You can't really pick a Phoenix unless you get some hard control. Uh, otherwise, you've got no way to zone people away from the supernova, and you've got no way to protect the Phoenix if he dives in. So FDL just had the number of carries that are a traditionally strong pick here cut down significantly. You basically need somebody that has a reliable or at least pretty decent AOE stun. Ooh, that's a, that's a decent answer right there. It's not the best in the world, to be honest, though, because yeah, he's got okay. a... It's not the greatest range in the world. Though they do eventually pick up an Aether Lens, usually on Bane, if you get the farm for it. Right. Uh, but he's probably going to be position 5, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, he'll, he'll be 5. The Phoenix will take... For, but the, the, another problem with the Bane is just that he can either throw down Nightmare on the Witch Doctor, and like you said, you have to get him pretty decently close to, to make that happen, or you can throw down a Fiend Script. Uh, Fiend Script is not a great spell on the Witch Doctor because of how long that Paralyzing Cask bounces around. Once it's out, you still can't use Fiend Script on the off chance that it bounces to you. Um, and, you know, Bounty Hunter is great against Bane because once he's tracked, his Shuriken from anywhere on the map will pretty much interrupt him. And Faceless Void has the Chronosphere and potentially uh, Time Lock to stop. So, uh, also Cold Snap, Tornado. There, there are a lot of ways that Shazam have to shut down the channeling coming out of FDL. There's not a lot of ways for Witch Doctor's channeling to be shut down. Yeah, it looks a little bit scary. I'm assuming that this is going to be that Corlina, and that kind of leads me to the assumption that Bane is going to be sitting mid a little bit more often than not, trying to harass away Invoker and slow down MSS. We saw how quick of a start he got off to there and just was completely able to, to cause trouble in that, that lane for the, the puck last time. I mean, I guess it wasn't the biggest issue, but really it was his mid-game presence and being able to get a lot of levels there. I kind of feel like I'm favoring Shazam's draft already, yeah. just because with the Bounty Hunter, they've got the Faceless Void now as well, who's going to be able to set up Sunstrikes and the big meatball combos that come out. I, I don't know how Friendship, Dedication, Love are going to be able to out-team fight Shazam, when they start to get this influx of gold from track. Yeah, you're also, there's just a lot of synergy, right? You've got the Death Ward on top or, or just next to the Chronosphere. That's tremendously valuable, especially with the Invoker's AoE skill set through the mid and late game. Uh, you do have Bounty Hunter who can track globally, start to harass, and then a Sunstrike coming out of Invoker. We already saw Shazam. Very comfortable still running the Exhort Invoker. I would expect them to run that again. The AoE control would be nice to pair with the Faceless Void, but I do suspect they're going to try to find Bounty Hunter kills um, with, with the Sunstrike just out of the mid lane. Invoker doesn't even have to rotate to make anything happen there. Um, the Bounty Hunter pairs really well up against the Bane, as we mentioned, right? Pairs really well up against the Nature's Prophet. If Nature's Prophet decides to rat, Bounty Hunter is pretty good at shutting that down, especially with the global reinitiation from the Invoker on the Sunstrike. They just... The cross-platform synergy here is great. FDL have good heroes, but they are, for the most part, very, very squishy. And they don't provide a lot of control. They just have damage. Five seconds remaining. Yeah. There are, the supports of Shazam are a little bit squishy themselves. And if Lena gets off to a good start and is, is able to time? find that bounty hunter or the witch doctor, there's definitely a potential to start snowballing with kills if she goes for that Yule Scepter uh, Aether Lens Ten combo. But it does feel like also the thing I always just worry now about Five those mid heroes that are a little bit on the squishier side. Even Queen of Pain, to a large extent, can Ten suffer. Oh man, and that's gonna be a that's a PA right there. <laughs> yeah, this is this is something that FDL actually like to run. I think they're the only team in the world that I've seen semi notably running this hero. But they they ran it just a couple days ago. They won. I don't remember who they were playing against, but you know, it's it's a hero that they're comfortable using. It doesn't give them any control though. It's just more double dam on damage, which is not what they need in my you know analysis. Well, I mean, if they do manage to find the initiation, um, 
that seems like it could be really strong, uh, yeah. a good answer, and being able to timber run saw. up like you can see the pieces are there. But man, we're going to be seeing a timber saw last pick. And I recently watched the the DC game um, the other day in Canada Cup where Moo was running this, and it was freaking disgusting. It's the just amount of, art. of armor that you had in region. Yeah. No, I mean Moo. Moo is he's a very good player <laughs> for for Brax. I'm sure he's going to give us a lot here as well. A nice thing about Timbersaw, even though he's a strength hero in the early game, he does rely pretty heavily on his overall armor mm. rather than on his HP pool, which is going to reduce the impact of that Sunray, right? Sunray is great against high health heroes, not super great against high effective HP heroes who are reliant on armor. Um, he also does pair into a faceless void or, or alongside a faceless void decently because of the chakram. Um, and, and Shazam do have a, a decent amount of control. Uh, they, they themselves don't even have very much in terms of reliable stun, but they have enough to channel or to, to interrupt channeling. That's really all they need. I'm just zooming in right now on that lovely little timber saw face. I got to say is like, as far as lore goes, as far as, you know, the character models and, and general silliness, I think timber saw might be one of my favorite heroes. He's so freaking cool. Just like runs around like crazy. He's got a great voice, great model. What more could you want out of a guy? Yeah. It, I, I can't help but notice the little dials on his thing don't tend to, to move. They always point to the same thing. It's like he doesn't run out of fuel and he's always going top speed. <laughs> Good stuff. Max it out at 11. Sunstrike comes through. <laughs> they scout out a few things. And with that spinal tap reference, we're going to move right in. As Stan King is going to drop down the ward. I think that they placed this exact same one last time around. So we'll a see. A lot if... of teams place this ward. Yeah. Honestly, I'm, I'm, it's almost to the point that in the Americas, it's worth buying a century and plopping it down there uh, just on the off chance that you find one. I think you'll find one in like 30% of games, if not more. Yeah. I am uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. I don't think it's as clear cut as it was last time. I think that Shazam have a lot of team fight potential and with that bounty hunter they have that ability to just sort of run out of control but FDL uh, they're no slouches I mean you've got a lot of burst damage here you've got PA you've got Lena with that Laguna blade gonna be able to scale pretty well and I haven't seen the Lena since the changes as far as the the damage components go as your uh, intelligence increases but I can't help but think that that would also just be really great for her so I'm really uh, I'm excited to see this game yeah, she has decent intelligence gain, but the way that that scales, it really only makes a huge difference either in the late game or if you're a hero who tends to buy things like Mystic Staff components, right? Mm -hmm. So depending on how Belina ends up building, if she does go into like a Yule Scepter build, it will help that intelligence gain, but it'll give her like 2% on top, which is not really that big of a deal, um, all things said and done. Oh, Pendego looking for it, ends he up being it. able to get the bounty hunt, or get the uh, the bounty rune, and a quick little run away. Does he actually survive this? Are you freaking kidding me? Come on now, it's not even fair. They get the tango, so really well played there by the bounty to sneak on in and find one, and unfortunately, that's a wasted sentry. Yeah, that's that might have even been the mid-sentry. No, there is a sentry here mid for CC and Z. Okay, yeah, no, I, he knows that both sentries were used now, too, because he's got to know that there's going to be one mid, and uh, he can feel pretty comfortable moving up into the top lane. Uh, he's going to sit here for a moment at least and try and snipe out that courier if it comes over. Another thing to mention coming. that we didn't really talk about all that much, it, it, we'll keep an eye on that on the mini-map as it's going to head over that direction. Um, one thing to think about is it is going to be a void safe lane. Um, is this a possibility to try and build into some of those more off lane type of void items and allow the timber saw to do the damage, or what's your thought there? They could. I I do think that you are going to rely more on the Void to do damage here than you traditionally would. Um, if, if you weren't going to build into a damage Void, you probably wouldn't have the Witch Doctor down here to help farm. You would put the Witch Doctor up top and try to shut down the PA, mm. right? Um, so because he is getting some support, which implies that they want him to get a lot of farm, uh, they need to utilize that farm in a way that creates advantage. And, and just having a lot of mobility doesn't create advantage enough for to, to justify that much investment. Mm. So I don't expect to see like the Blink Dagger Force Staff void or whatever we would normally see. Maybe somewhere in between. Okay. Um, but attack speed is probably going to be a high priority here. He is also, like, he's all of their attack speed, other than potentially the Invoker to knock down the, the Supernova. 
Right. Right. So that's another consideration. I guess the other thing to consider is that if Timbersaw gets off to a bad start and your Void builds a blink, then you're like, you basically right. can't fight in the mid game, and that's what you need to be able to do. Um, yeah, there's just no damage to follow up. Right. Well, it does look like now, at least for the moment, Brax is going to be able to soak up a little bit of experience here. Mid lane, uh, CCNC did be able to, was able to spot out that bounty hunter, and so this might be a little bit of damage coming through, but I don't think that they find the kill. Like, oh wait, no, that's actually the Radiant Sentry. They had no idea. CCNC in a little bit of trouble. Another one goes through, but that uh, last hit from the tower is not going to be able to find the bounty. Not quite, but it did. They did just force out the south. Which is awesome for the Invoker. Invoker has enough natural sustain that Lena's not likely to force him away. But without the salve, she may herself be in at risk of being forced out of the lane entirely. Wow, Brax is going to die to <laughs> the creeps here potentially. It does look like he's just trying to, I guess, build up the stacks and finish it off. He's pretty close to, to dying, definitely, but he has that reactive armor, only one point in it right now, but you can see the effectiveness of this hero. He salves up and is going to head back. Meanwhile, mid lane, a lot of things going on. As fun has the Invis and there's no reveal right here, and they do end up going for that coconut bounce, a couple more hits, and it is going to end up maybe being a kill. The Sunray is not quite OP enough, and Pandego does manage to find that first blood going his way. Yeah, Lena is not a great hero to mid into a bounty hunter, especially if you have good rotations coming out of a witch doctor as well. Uh, just because she has no traditional escape. Uh, a lot of formerly strong mids that like classic mid matchups would be, you know, your Queen of Pains, your Pox, they all have methods of getting away from a potential rotation. Uh, especially because you do have the Faceless Void as your, your safe lane carry, mm. and the Timber Saw as your side lane off laner those heroes don't need support constantly, right? They just need a little bit of support in order to maintain equilibrium in their lane with pulls. Um, for, for the Void and for the Timbersaw, he doesn't need any support at all. That, that just tells you even more so that this Lena's going to have heavy pressure on her from rotations. Oh, Pandango. He, uh, he keeps on almost being able to, to find that courier and might be able to get it here on the backside as nice little dodge there. They realize the inherent danger and at least for the moment, are going to keep it in the area. This might be a little bit scary. He's playing a little bit of footsie with it, but there's the speed boost away and not going to be able to find him. It's coming back out. Now there's no speed boost. This is a dead courier. Oh, God, what's happening? This is He's a little do bit it. sketchy. Yeah, that should be one and two, three. Oh! No, he does not quite have the damage. And now he actually doesn't have any mana either, so in a ton of trouble, he's forced to run away. The Sunray is not going to be able to find him, though. So is he just going to be able to walk away? He might be able to deny himself to neutrals. There's going to be the Dragon Slave from afar, but they don't quite get him, and he's just going to be able to deny himself. Yeah, all right. Well, that's a, that's a wash one way or the other. That really could have been a, a dead courier. You, you, he had the, the... It's unfortunate that that happened before the bounty hunter would bought out his boots, right? Because he had the money for it before he died. Mm -hmm. um, just, just looking at the way this game is shaking out, I do think Shazam go into the mid game a little bit faster than their opponents, especially if TC does go in for this like Vanguard build, which I think he's grabbing his yeah, ring of health right now. Um, He's just going to be pretty survivable, be able to group up with his team. The, the damage isn't quite there. At that point in time, you're still relying on the Invoker and the Timbersaw. But mid lane, that is going to be a dead bounty hunter in just a second. The Dragon Slave comes through, and we talked about it, the rotations that can come in. You had the TP from that Bane as well as the TP in from the Nature's Prophet. I, I, I think that this it makes the most sense for TC you're talking about, like going for the Vanguard. You can go for mobility if you want, since you have such high damage heroes with the offlane and the mid laner, but it's not worth taking the risk of those guys potentially getting shut down, so I, I like it. Yeah, this is... I think that this is the right call out of this position. Um, yeah, as we're breaking into this game, I do like the rotation out of FTL. It has led to the, the PA getting a little bit less in lane, but having a support up here and letting your mid just get shut down is not a worthy trade. All right, so the Bane rotating away, the Phoenix rotating away. They will get a little bitty side pull here to reset equilibrium. And hopefully that's going to be enough to keep CC and C in this game. If she starts to fall out from underneath FDL, Shazam will probably just start to steamroll. She is a huge portion of their mid game damage. Definitely. So as far as uh, she's concerned, do you like the idea of going for like an Aether Lens early, or is it more worth it to try and go for the Yule Scepter first, that traditional thing that we saw before? 
I think a Yules is good in this game because, once again, they don't have a lot. Actually, up top, we'll have to come back to this. Nice little jump away. Brax is not actually going to get caught up in those trees. They do lose the Witch Doctor, but quick moves, and they're able to escape for the moment. But still four heroes up here. they got to be careful. This is a little bit scary. All right. They're, they're going to apply pressure onto this tower and force some sort of a rotation. It doesn't really look like they want to try and take anything. Like, TC is down here. He does have that uh, Chronosphere available, but only the Ring of Health. It does feel like if they just come in right now, this might be a little bit uh, too much to, to bite off. They're actually going to have five heroes over here as well. Um, and no real great way to try and slow this down at this point. Maybe going to look for the Courier Snipe on the way back. Is the Bounty Hunter going to be in the area? He is looking for it. Let's see if he can get it this time. He's got boots. So he should be able to get it, but he's coming in at a oh, weird angle. He needs to get this. No. Nope. Uh, <sighs> weird angle. Close. Meanwhile, on their side, though, they're able to find one. Chronosphere hits there. Is going to be a ton of freaking damage onto that PA. She goes down, and that's what we were talking about right there. Brax might be able to go down himself. They get the Dragon Slay from afar. Laguna Blade is not oh, quite going to finish off fun, and she's still pretty freaking fast with this haste in here. It is going to get first hit bashed, trying to run away. They find the kill, and she is going to be able to make her escape really nicely playing. Meanwhile, on the other side, the Bane kills off the Bounty Hunter like it ain't no thing. Can they find this on the backside? MSS looking for CC and C is going to force to try and... Oh, my God. Is this going to be the Juke of all the ages? Spots out MSS. Looking on him from on high. Meanwhile, over on the other side, TC is battling away with that Nature's um, Prophet. No, she came down at the wrong time. The battle continues. Faceless Void denies the tower. And I think that's going to about do it. Ollie Ollie Oxen free. The Lena. I'm not sure oh my God. how she thought she was going to sneak by there, to be honest. But I guess she figured nighttime vision, give it a shot. Otherwise, she probably dies anyway. I, I honestly, I do think that the Invoker had figured that she maybe TP'd out or something and was about to give up, but. She panicked a bit. It's okay. Happens to everybody. I, I don't know completely what that was as we switch over that word. Like, for a second, they, they scanned the dire base and then sunstruck it. Um, I don't know what their, their goal was with that, but nobody was very low. Um, it's a very hectic game that we're in right now. I they, thought, say. they thought that the Lena had TP'd home, mm. right? That's what it was. They were scanning to see if but the, the TP Invoker... home had been there. The Invoker killed him first before oh, really? that happened. I don't know. I, I don't know anymore. I got my order of operations wrong then. <laughs> I just saw it on the map, and I assumed that it had been there. Um, Brax just throwing out Timber Chains because he's got an Arcane Rune, and why the hell not? Is he, is, he is not at all worried about anything. TC has Chronosphere back up in 20 seconds, but I don't think he finds a way to kill this Nature's Prophet. They're just running at each other. Like, honestly, this is... Well, he's got a vanguard, so these trees don't even bother him whatsoever. Um, Nature's Prophet barely bothers him right now. So he, he can afford to just roll in. He is going to Chronosphere here probably. Wow. What mm. a pause. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't tell. Is Phoenix going in Icarus dive mode right now? It looks like something's going on. Uh, I can't tell. His action isn't held down, so maybe not, but... Okay. I mean, up top, TC just time-walked in. Down bottom, Phoenix may be getting in for the Icarus dive. Well, we'll so see we're really potentially going to see two fights break out. Well, there's the jump forward. It's just going to be to try and get a, a right click. They do manage to TP over to the side here. Brax is still in the area. Hasn't dropped anything as of yet. So it looks like they're just going to reset for the moment. They jump now onto the Phoenix. Quick and easy. The Shuriken from afar. Not going to find the kill. He's down to 75 HP. Looking for a Sunstrike potentially. He does have it up and available, but they're going to salve and walk away. Yeah, all right. It, I, it didn't cost him anything, right? He'd go for the Phoenix. Same thing up top. TC... Time walked in, harassed the Nature's Prophet, but did end up backing out when he saw some, uh, I think there was a TP uh, fake juke out up there. But that's okay. Uh, TC is getting the farm that he needs. He's doing all right. He has bought out something recently. And it was his treads. So he finished up his treads and is not really being harassed. This is such an interesting game to me, too. Like... It's just been so much fighting over and over again, and there's been so few objectives taken. I can't help but feel like the Shazam lineup really favors this type of game just by nature of having that bounty hunter. And when he eventually does come up and online with that level six, uh, things are going to start to go well. Is there any way that FDL try and change the, the course of this? Or you think they're comfortable with the game so far? I think the fact that the bounty hunter is still 
kind of far away from six and that they are not absolutely getting crushed. Like for FDL, they're just trying to get enough space to get the, the PA, the Mortred, that Battle Fury. If they can do that without losing their tier one towers so that the PA still has access to jungle, I think they're actually pretty happy at that stage. Um, they are going to rotate down here onto the Timber Sod. No ultimate from the Bane. I got the Nightmare. This is going to set up for There's the Light setup. Strike Array, and that should be a pretty, pretty quick and easy one. They get that Laguna Blade out, and Timber Saw is pretty tanky, but not that tanky. I'm interested to see where this Lena ends up going for a build, because we were talking about it before. I think that the Yule Scepter would help make sure that that Bane doesn't have to put himself in danger for the setup, but also because they just don't have a lot of ways to knock the Witch Doctor out of the ultimate, mm. and every little bit helps, right? Especially if that Witch Doctor, like, Wait, saves the ultimate before, until after the Light Strike array. You want something that will come back and, and give you the opportunity to, to interrupt it. But that said, having the um, enormous burst damage from a range is by no means something to shake a stick at, right? It's pretty yeah. good. Absolutely. And Phoenix now almost level 6 himself too. Um, not a ton of items. That's really sort of what we're going to be looking for is the, the Lena's items next. Void did manage to pick up the Vanguard. Meanwhile, Brax, uh, is it just Bloodstone or Bust pretty much for this guy? Uh, yes. I, I think that he's just going to go straight into that. I, I don't see why he would go on anything else. The only reason maybe he wouldn't do that is if he's concerned that the Lena burst damage this early in the game is going to destroy his Bloodstone count, yeah. his charge count. He, you know, if that were his concern, then he would probably get one item before and then move into the Bloodstone. But he'll certainly be going into a Bloodstone at some point. Speaking of Lena, Invis Ruin Online, and they're still stalking down in this area. It's sort of settled down at this point. MSS is continuing to farm up, does have the Hand of Midas as well as the drums. Uh, ooh, Courier Snipe, pretty easy. Oh, not quite going to have the vision. Nighttime came through, and they do scan out, realize that Lena's in He's the area. They it. should get it on this side, though. And She's well, going to get this Courier. Maybe. Oh, no, she's not. Uh, uh, oh, she, she gets it. From she gets afar? It. Yeah, nice. I thought she needed to Dragon Slate first for the uh, for the attack speed to get it, but she narrowly snags it. We're playing Bounty Hunter better than Bounty Hunter does. He's had a couple of opportunities, has yet to grab it for Pandago. Absolutely. It's been a little bit of a rough one, and suddenly back up here on top lane. That was the TP scroll that went out to Brax. Meanwhile, they're going to think about jumping in at least. Stan King gets hit a couple times with the tower, goes in from afar. There's the Fiend's grip, and the jump by PA finds the kill. Several heroes rotate in there, able to get off the supernova, though, and that's actually caught out. Bounty Hunter is going to get hit by this, too. They do find the kill on the Bane and throwing out those spirits and then a quick little runaway. Meanwhile, the whole time, Phantom Assassin stay in the trees. Um, I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but they do TP in now as that is going to be a dead Lena. They try and kill off MSS, the quick TP away, realizing what he needed to do. Yeah. And that's going to be five to seven. I would one for one trade, but uh, actually two for one at the end of the day. Yeah, that's that's that lack of control that we were talking about for FDL coming back and biting him in the butt. I, I think that that's a pretty solid trade, even ignoring the numbers. The fact that TC was around for the kill that's bottom, but the net worth still one on the invoker means that you're splitting it up pretty evenly. TC is looking to build into the Vanguard Radiance. That is sort of a, what is that, a Wagamama build, I think? Oh, yeah. Uh, on, on, on the Faceless Void. That will give him a pretty decent response to the Phantom Assassin with the Mischance and a pretty decent overall damage output. What it will not give him is the ability to knock down the Supernova because it doesn't really give him the attack speed that he needs for that. And it won't give him really a response to the magic damage that comes out of the Lena. Those are kind of the, the plus and minuses of those builds. I do have to say, though, that I'm, I'm still very... Well, we'll have to hold that thought, as I think that Phoenix is about to die, possibly. They may be seeing if they can bait out a couple more rotations. But there's the Icarus dive into a whole world of pain, and the first track kill of the game goes the way of MSS. Um, the thing that I was kind of curious about, though, is now that we're starting to, to look towards this later stage, is how is PA going to survive in these fights? You've got the all of the stuff that comes from Timbersaw. I... I just am so concerned about this hero. She relies so heavily on the evasion, but if you've got pure damage, like that means nothing. Right, and also there's just a lot of damage that's magical as well. Oh. It's not attack based. <laughs> well, um, they weren't quite ready. <laughs> is hard. It's hard to do pure damage if you're in nine pieces on the ground constantly, though. This Timbersaw is one, four, and zero. He 
just has been caught out consistently, and it's really easy to catch him out with the, oh, we're gonna have an engagement here. Chronosphere onto two, they end up being able to throw out that su uh, Sunray as well. It's not gonna be enough. The Light Strike Ray catches only onto those Forge Spirits, and CCNC should be dropping in just a couple of seconds. Sunray is pretty freaking good, though. The jump forward with the time walk, Track Kill is gonna go their way. They've got another one in just a second if they want, but there's the Supernova. They're gonna have to commit to kill that one, and it is not going to be Track, but it's still a kill. Pretty yeah. well done. Probably that Phoenix wasn't going to get away regardless of what he did there, but throwing out the attack slow on the fire spirits, he had a couple left before he went into Supernova. That, that once again, it felt a little bit like a, oh my god, let's panic moment, but it's a pretty reasonable panic moment, to be fair. Like, he's being run down by hordes of opponents, and everybody around him just died. Okay, PA does have the Battle Fury up, so... That's at least the farming. Didn't quite get it up before the tier ones dropped, which was my, remember, I, I had given some conditions for success on FDL's early game. I don't think they quite hit those conditions, but they came very close. The question is, without those tier one towers, are they going to be able to keep enough space open for this PA to get farm? Or is Bounty Hunter just going to be able to roll through, provide tracks and, and just strip this area control away? I mean, that's the thing that I'm concerned about at this point. Like, you've got MSS who's got maxed out Exor right now, has the Blink Dagger. It's already a 5,000 net worth lead with right about the same amount of experience. They actually run into the Nature's Prophet here, and this could be a quick and easy kill if they end up being able to combo it together with the Void, looking for their moment of initiation. Cold Snap could come if they want, and that's going to be the setup for it, and it, they're just going to be able to right-click them down. Like, there's nothing doing. Alacrity just does too much freaking damage, and there's going to be a Blink away with the TP, I'm assuming. Is TC going to go down, though? They're still hanging around. He has Chronosphere in seven seconds. He jumps away. They don't get the Fiend's Grip out. This could actually be a huge moment right now. Timbersaw kills off on the other side, the PA, and I think that they're looking to reinitiate. They find CCNC, Fiend's Grip from afar. If they want to go for it, there's also going to be the Death Ward down. Staking goes down, as does the Lena. Four dead all across the map. It is just falling apart for FDL at this stage. Shazam are playing so well. Yeah, I mean, they have executed this window extremely effectively. This is exactly when you expect them to get going, right? You do have some basic survivability and damage up on your Faceless Void. Uh, you now have track on Bounty Hunter, and that's really the moment that you need to start getting active. And the mid game, since the draft, we've said the mid game is really gonna be where Shazam want to execute. Oh, they even covered the Sunstrike as well, or they covered the Icarus dive there by MSS. If the Phoenix did manage to try and get away from them, they're gonna end up getting caught by that. So covering the bases, dotting the dotting the I's and crossing the T's. I almost inverted that like a silly guy, but it's a, it's a pretty good one. There are lines and dots happening and they're working out <laughs> in Shazam's favor. How much specificity does the audience need? Really lyrical. None at all, I'm sure. Well, if he is gonna go back for a Deso, I, I do like this item pickup. I think that this is the answer that they need. I'm just concerned about how quickly it's going to come up, considering she might get jumped on in a second by this bounty hunter combo with a couple other heroes. Sure I don't can. think she rushes Deso. I think she gets the Blight Zone because it's cheap and easy, and it gives her a lot more damage relative. Okay. Um, but I think that she goes from that into something that will give her survivability. BKB, uh, maybe? And then, yeah, either potentially a BKB or I think maybe even just a Helmet Dominator. Because, you know, BKB is not going to help her against Chronosphere. It's not going to help her against the pure damage, and it's not going to help her uh, in the Death Ward. Well, you can see right now. Excuse as me. Well. It, will, it will help against Chakram, because that doesn't your spell. Oh, yeah, but it, it won't help against all the physical damage and, and the Chronosphere. I just, I, I'm looking at the map right now, and you see the vision advantage that that Shazam have, it's just absolute at this point. Like, all the waves are pushed out generally, but also the illusions that are out there. They've got this great ward that's back behind, seeing all the courier movements. Uh, basically, Bounty Hunter has just been chilling here, and they are going to actually be able to kill her off! A quick and easy one with the stun strike combo! This Bounty Hunter, the substitute, doing a, doing a great job. Yeah, as soon as he hit six, he started going out and getting work done. Up until that point, he had gotten a little bit done, but he leveled uh, more slowly, I think, than he had wanted and got caught out a little bit more often. He missed those couriers by just a hair on his head, but uh, it's far more important that your bounty hunter executes at level six than it is that your bounty hunter executes at level one through five. Yeah, that's the thing that I always hear about people say is that the hero, it's the reason that people try and always ban out the hero because he can have a terrible laning stage and it just doesn't matter because you catch back up eventually and you look at him now and what he's got he's got the mechanism online arcane boots could build into those greaves in just a couple of minutes and 
he's just such a huge component of this draft. Um, also being able to give all that extra gold to their allies. Uh, Brax does have Bloodstone up, and he's got him, you know, uh, a, a pretty decent run. Considering he was one and four uh, just a couple minutes ago, he's now three and four. He's got that 12 charge Bloodstone ready to go and fuel him. This is going to be trouble for FDL if they don't get farm up on this PA faster than they are. They, they, they need to find a way to get this going faster. One of those ways could be to sack the Ancients and try to protect them for the AoE potential of that Battle Fury in order to farm her, you know, put, put it on steroids. Hmm. But they, they've got to do something because they have no control over their own space right now with that Bounty Hunter coming out and just scouting. I, I got to say that, you know, you can understand the reason why if, if you pick the Bane, you want to be able to try and lock down these mobile heroes that they had. Even at the early stages, it was the Invoker and um, I believe the Phoenix, uh, not the Phoenix, excuse me, the Invoker and the, the Bounty Hunter. If you found them, that was going to be great. But given the dynamic of this game, it just it's not ended up working out for them in the ways they need their their position five to function, I feel like. Like yeah. they, they, they need more AoE teamfight abilities or possibly... Um, something that allows them to push more effectively? I don't know. What are your thoughts there? It's really, they just need to be able to survive right now. That's that's what it's going to come down to. For, for FDL and for Shazam, they're doing everything that they need. I don't think they need anything other than to stay the course and not panic. Um, once they start to strip away all of the control, they're going to move on to the towers. Uh, they might not be able to take high ground right away. Oh! Well, they but, baited it. <laughs> okay, they, the towers still <laughs> fell. Shazam are perfectly happy with that, I think. Sinking pretty freaking durable. Um, does finally end up falling and actually going to hit the light strike right. MSS from afar. Not going to go down, though. They keep them alive. Oh, they get a really nice Bloodstone suicide there. But, oh, hot damn, are they running on everything right now. MSS doesn't even go down after the Laguna Void. They're in a great position. Um, I, I am a little concerned. This PA got a Mithril Hammer, so she is either going for BKB or going for Desolator. It's too early to tell which one of those it is, but if she goes straight Desolator into the mischance that already exists on the Radiance and also the fact that she just has not really been able to survive a Sunstrike, basically, yeah. I, I'm very concerned about this PA's survivability if she goes straight into Desolator Glass Cannon style. Yeah, I, I, I can understand it. I mean, I can understand the, the need for it, too, though. They feel like they just need to be able to burst somebody at the start of a fight, but there's so many things that they need that I don't even know. Like, if she goes BKB at this point, I don't think that that solves her problems, either. It's just there's so many issues. Invoker finds the kill on the Bane. Uh, I don't know what ended up happening there. I guess they just caught him out as he was heading down towards the bottom lane with that uh, Observer Ward. So a little bit unfortunate and... Shazam, continue. I love that Brax has gotten two Bloodstone charges since the last time I checked, and no kills and no assists. He's just been kind of lurking <laughs> around the action. Good stuff. Well, I, I, if you're FDL, there's nothing you can do about this. At this point in time, they probably just need to try and defend high ground as best they can, putting in a deep supernova and baiting their opponents in deep. That is not what you want to be hearing when your PA still only has one core item at 23 minutes. Meanwhile, your opponent's Faceless Void has a full Radiance uh, yeah. on top of a Vanguard, right? The, the, the net worth in favor of Void is tremendous. It's almost half of PA's net worth on top. I think that, like, there's sort of... Uh, and again, oh god, Brax might be able to get Woo. caught here. They're doing a good chunk of damage to him, and it actually suicide. looks like they might be able to find this one. Supernova dropped as well. Uh, I don't know about this. This is suddenly not looking so great, and CC and T is going to get controlled for the moment. They throw out the Chakram from afar. The Alacrity finds the kill, and just like that, you see that the rest of FDL just has to run away. Oh man, that really hurts. That's uh, now down to five Bloodstone charges for Lena. Yeah. There's just no vision on the map for FDL either, so there's no way for them to really have a good sense of if that fight is going to work out in their favor or if it's not. If they had managed to catch Brax with the Banal and kill him during that period, that would have been pretty solid for them. But otherwise, what are they going to get from chasing Brax there, right? Uh, without the Banal, he always has a suicide option. He might run into friends and, and bait you in. FDL just don't have a lot of options for ways to take a good fight because they have no control in their draft. 
Man, MSS is just running around like a madman. He literally sunstruck the PA up here in the top lane, ran down to the bottom, was almost able to find the kill on the Nature's Prophet. He was trying to run away from there and just all over the place. Um, you can tell that he wants this one pretty badly, and they're going to go for the Icarus dive forward. No Supernova for another 30 seconds. They're chasing pretty far for this one. Might be able to find a kill onto that Bounty Hunter, and with ruthless efficiency, Lena Laguna blades him down. Pretty nicely done. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's a, a healthy gold swing in their favor. It's unfortunate oh the PA wasn't around for the AoE gold on that, but still, you're getting something. It is a stray Desolator on the PA. Um, okay, let's see how it works out for him. I mean, again, the, the reason that I was saying that it might be the thing that they end up going for is because I just feel like you lack so much damage if you don't end up going for it, and they're kind of all in at this point. Like, there's no no half measures, so maybe if they find a fight when there isn't a void around and they're able to control the timber saw, like, get a fiend's grip on them, that's going to be how you find a kill. And actually, he's sticking around here, so if Brax doesn't back up relatively shortly... Yeah, he's out of there. There's no way. All right, so, yeah, the Desolator gives him a lot more damage. It gives him zero ounces more control. Uh, as you said, if they get a perfect fight, that Desolator could work out. But even with two, she's being forced to run away. Oh. Like, and it's not the big two. It's a Blink Dagger Bounty Hunter and a Timber Saw running after her, and she still she has to run away. Oh, Fiend's Grip, they catch it. She's actually able to get out of there for the moment, but the Tornado Counter Initiation with the Meatball onto all of them. Nature's Prophet dropping very low. He is going to end up falling, still tracked up. If they get one Shuriken off, it's going to be pretty huge. Pendango trying to find the kill. Haven't been able to find him over there. They do get Stanking. Not going to be able to get the PA, but that's CC and C dead. Meanwhile, the Sunray trying to make her way out of here, but the Bash is going to come through, and Phoenix is down again. Another track kill going their direction. Everything is falling apart. When it rains, it pours for FDL, and that's going to be the Timber Saw disconnecting. Um, apparently, he had better things to do right now. They're doing a great job, though. He doesn't need to be here, to be honest. They, they could just run Timber Saw into the opponents and then come follow up behind him. It would be the same thing as it's been. <laughs> just kind of use him to bait out what's going on. Well, the, the little bit of good news. PA did not die in that fight. So, you know, you got to take your you take your things. He timber saws aggressively in PA's direction. Um, <laughs> and it's just going to back out now. Yeah, free racks. There's no ability to really counteract that. We haven't seen an effective supernova so far this game, which is actually kind of surprising to me because there's not a lot of attack speed on Shazam. Um, that, that was really the one, one bit of reinitiation they had uh, and they haven't been able to utilize it hmm. for the PA to build this high damage okay that's fine we've talked about it a bunch but you absolutely need Sand King to be totally in control of these fights on his own if that's going to be the case and it's, it has not been the case so far before oh, even just yeah. yeah, well, that's a Chronosphere onto three. That's going to be the Nature's Prophet trying to come in and do anything at all. But GG ends up getting called as it's finally over. CC and C drops, as does the, the last Nature's Prophet. And that was a five man wipe. They're just. Shazam plays so well. They, they yeah. really play a great game together. I think that they had a well executed draft that covered all their bases. And um, FDL just weren't quite able to take that one away from them. Yeah, I think Shazam read the draft extremely well here, too. From the moment where FDL kind of felt cornered into last picking that Phantom Assassin, Shazam, it was their game to lose, and they gave no opportunities for FDL to bounce forward, right? There were no major mistakes coming out of Shazam. There was one weird, predictive Chronosphere that didn't end up working out. But other than that, Shazam were right on the ball. Well, an absolutely fabulous one. Again, Lyrical Dota as well as the Wonder Cow, sir. Any final words before we finish off this series here and head into our next one? Two quick games gets us back on schedules. That's all I've got. Absolutely. So great stuff. Again, Yan Yang Championships. This is the American qualifiers. Shazam take it 2-0 over FDL. They're going to drop down into the lower bracket, which means that they're going to have to face off against Team... 
Well, they're going to have to face off against the winner of today's later series, which is going to be a best of one between Enemy GG and Dragneel. So stay tuned for that to figure out who it's going to be. The next series that we've got is going to be DC facing off against Infamous. So a little bit of uh, NA slash Europe versus South America. And then that's going to be uh, the loser of that one goes down to face Team Freedom. So stick around, everybody. More great qualifier action uh, coming up in just a few minutes.